Good morning everyone. On this Sunday the 21st of June 2020, the second Sunday after Trinity. Today happens to be Father's Day, so a very happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Let us pray. Gracious God, we who are baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death. We pray that as you raised him from death, so by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may live the new life to your glory, knowing ourselves to be dead in sin, but alive for you in Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 10 beginning to read at verse 24. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the servant, the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden, that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roof. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take him up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we continue with the instructions that Jesus has given to his 12 apostles, those whom we normally call the disciples. There is a lot of information contained in these 16 verses and time will not allow me to go through each of them. So I will pick out a few and focus on them. I want to start at verse 26. This verse informs us that everything will be known at the last. No matter what has happened in the past, nothing will be hidden. That is in our own lives, but also in the lives of those who have harmed us in the past and who have not repented. And we know all about that in Northern Ireland. Many murders have been committed and while justice does not appear to be happening here in this world, it is sure to happen when the people stand before God, the great judge. No high powered lawyer will be any good in front of that judge who knows everything and has the power to decide each person's destiny. And we all know what that, that that is one of two places, 
heaven or hell. We are not to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Instead, we are to proclaim it from the roof. Now, roofs in Bible times were flat, so therefore could be used as a platform to speak to a crowd of people standing on the ground. It gave the speaker a great opportunity to be heard as his voice could be carried further and more people could hear him. The gospel is something that we should not be afraid of and we should be wanting to spread it to as many people as possible. Verse 28 gives us all a stark warning. We are not to be afraid of man, but to be afraid of God. Now at first glance you might seem it might seem that one the one to be afraid of is Satan, as he controls hell. But if you look carefully at the word one, it has a capital O, which shows that Jesus is talking about God. God is the one who ultimately decides our destiny. And we all know what happens in hell. Even if men attack us, they may destroy our body. But when we have that saving faith in Jesus Christ, no matter what they do to us, they cannot destroy our soul. God loves us, no matter what we are going through. We are more valuable to him than anything else. And he knows much more about us than we know about ourselves. In verses 29 and 30, Jesus tells us that our Father, God, knows when a sparrow falls to the ground and that we are much more than many sparrows. We are worth much more than many sparrows. So if God cares for each individual sparrow, how much more does he care for you and for me? We are also told that every hair on our head is numbered. Now that is much easier for some heads than for others. But it shows us how much God is interested in each of us. If he knows the exact number of hairs on our head. As we all know. That Jesus is our mediator between ourselves and God. So he tells us in verse 32 and 33 that if we are willing to stand up for him and speak out to others, he will plead for us before God. But the same is in reverse. If we refuse to speak out about him to others and deny him to those who do not believe, why would we expect Jesus to stand for us? The simple, is, simple fact is that he won't. It is our choice. We have been given the free will to choose. So let us make the right choice. In verse 38, we have Jesus calling us to take up our cross and follow him. Now the cross, as we all know, was a means of execution. But Jesus is not saying that everyone will have to die for the faith. Some will, unfortunately. But the chances that we will have, we will be called to lay down our lives for the sake of Jesus Christ will be rare. But we need to be putting him first and nothing else should matter. Not even commitments to family members, as we have seen from verses 35 to 37. We are of no value ourselves, but are here to worship God and we should be putting him first in all that we say and do. Finally, we have in verse 38, Jesus telling his apostles and us that if we turn to him, our physical bodies will be of no importance. And if our focus is on ourselves, we are lost. And we need, so we need to turn to Christ spiritually and gain eternal life in heaven. 
So what is more important? When life on this earth is over, and it will someday, we need to be ready to join with the angels, praising and worshipping God forever in our spiritual bodies. Jesus gave the apostles instructions to follow, and those same instructions are for us as well. So I urge you to make the right decision to follow Christ and to do it today. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake. Amen.